Welcome to it. It's going to be a fantastic show. A show where we sit down and have a conversation with your favorite woman in sport. Just nice and relaxed. My name is Belen Kirtley. So good to be with you. It's uh, great to be back on your screens right here on SABC2, where you belong. We have an exciting guest in the studio today. She's a mover, a shaker, and has certainly carved her niche in sports marketing. Kiabetswe Tayele is here, and she'll share her story with us a little bit later on. You're welcome to join in the conversation. It's so easy on Twitter, at LevelMortsWitty, at Valen Kirtley, at Sports at SABC. And we're also on Facebook. All you got to do is just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. Today we are celebrating female role models who are impacting South Africa through sport. Now they are forces to be reckoned with and role models to so many children and young girls. They are driving innovation, engagement and deal making in sports. And today we are telling their stories. Kiabetsu Taele is among those developing new approaches in media and marketing, spearheading initiatives that are worth watching. She'll tell us a little bit more about her journey later on the show. I cannot wait. I'm before, super excited. Yeah, before before we start speaking about our game changer yes. and her area of expertise, let us just take a moment to mm -hmm. celebrate Banyana. Banyana, our national women's football team. They've qualified for every edition of the Women's Africa Cup of Nations since inception in 1998. And they've just recently got something else. Absolutely. Their best record, though, was second place in 2000 at home and eight years later in Equatorial Guinea. And this is what you wanted to get into. Yes, yes, yes. They've been nominated for the Team of the Year Award in the upcoming South African Sports Awards. They're nominated alongside who? <laughs> Our South African Sevens team yes. and Super Rugby team, the Lions. Absolutely. Banyana have had a fantastic year qualifying for the Women's Africa Cup of Nations to be played in Ghana next month. So I'm really excited with that nomination because it also gives them the good spirit going ahead. They, they can see that they are being looked after in their country and they're also being rewarded by all their efforts. Absolutely, it's not going to be easy at the women's AFCON in Ghana. No. My word, we just saw the draw. Mm. Nigeria, yes, in Kenya, group. Zambia, and only the top three teams will qualify for the World Cup. We and this is be. that golden generation of Banyana players yeah. that are saying, yeah, now we is have to. our time we have to, to qualify for the World Cup. Absolutely, Valen. Looking forward to their performance. Impact as in the ladies' club. Yeah, so this one goes like this. All over the world, it's been recognized that sport can be a force to amplify women's voices and tear down gender barriers and discrimination. That comes from Dr. Pam Sarah. Sure, Dr. Pam Sarah is a section head of sport and recreation management within the Department of Marketing and Logistics and Sports management at the Tswani University of Technology. What powerful words those are. It certainly is. And I think that uh, when women play in different spaces, mm. that's where you really get gender mm. equality. And yes. uh, in sport, we want more women to Absolutely. play in that space. And we're certainly starting to see more and more of that. We're off for a quick break. Do get those fingers ready because it's your chance to get in conversation with us on social media because our game changer, Kia Tele, is up next. Welcome back. And so, Buhile, Nano Larna Le Ratahang Lama Fumahadi, Eling the Ladies Club, and Manamukanele Nyabu Bedu. Hopulang Okakopa na Luruna on social media platforms. Sabri Sangfela, the Ladies Club, Eling hashtag ya Runa, at Valen Kirtli, at Lebo Mutswedi, at Sport, at SABC. Impa Hona Jwale, Harweka Kiyata Ela, who started her career as a sport journalist and soon changed her course, becoming a sports marketer. It was on this path that she found her passion and fell in love with sport. Ten years into the game, Kia has mastered how to be creative and edgy. Ladies and gentlemen, our game changer today. Good morning and welcome to the Ladies Club. Yeah. <laughs> You're in smile. You. We're happy to have you here. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you for having me. No. Yes. Are, are you used to being the one putting people in the chair. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling sitting here? Well, I'm a little bit nervous, but excited <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> All right, let's talk about your career. What a fantastic career you've had. But let's take it back to, because we mentioned you started as a sport journalist. Is that where it all began, the love for sport? But prior to that? 
Actually, Life of Sports started prior to that yeah. because um, um, I come from a small town called Zerist. Mm -hmm. um, within that, there's a little village called Barakalala, and that's exactly where I grew up. And I was a that girl that used to be around guys watching football. Mm. I was that girl that should be around guys and watching tennis. So that's where my love for sport actually started. And I think one memory that I have of me was um, I was in a boarding school when the 2010 World Cup bid was being unveiled. And um, I was the only girl in a dining hall and we had a little small TV, and uh, the FIFA president by then, SB, when he removed that envelope, the S came first, do you remember? Oh, and yes. we all screamed, and the boys were jumping, and they were carrying me, throwing me up and down. After <laughs> that, my ribs were sore, but I was literally the only girl <laughs> that was around that. Wow. Um, so that's exactly where I knew that I've got a thing for sports, mm. yeah. And then did you always know that you wanted to go into sports journalism when you took up media studies at Boston uh, City College? Actually, no. No, no, no. I, I went into media studies when I finished my degree, which was a major of journalism and uh, radio. I actually went to work for independent newspapers, and my first internship position was current affairs had nothing to do with sports wow. and I was in current affairs as an intern for two months up until I walked into HR and I was like I don't think this speaks to mm. me I don't think I belong in that little corner there mm. and I remember my <laughs> HR manager then saying that no you're only allowed to move spaces after two months uh, sorry after six months of being in an intern so your next phase you can change positions I listened to her I said okay I hear you the following morning, I went into the sports department, and I remember then it was spearheaded by David Legg. I walked into his office, and I said, sir, my name is Kriya. I'd like to have five minutes of your time. Mm. He looked at me, and said, okay, have a seat. We had a conversation. Clearly, he gave me more than five minutes of his time because mm -hmm. two days later, I had a new corner. Wow. <laughs> in sports. In sports. <laughs> and this is now the Star newspaper. I was surrounded by the likes of Matsilali Mamabola. I was oh. surrounded by the likes of Stuart Hess, the likes of Kevin McCallum and Gary Matsu around me. You know, Sepa Milo and mm. was doing wonders with kickoff at the moment. So I was surrounded by those men and the female as senior reporter there was Kushet and Dibi by that time. That time so yeah. what a journey now that, get, yeah. that gets you into sports marketing. Um, but now that was still journalism. That was still journalism. How was the move then initiated from journalism to sports marketing? Um, it was an opportunity that just popped up from nowhere. We were running around doing stories for the 20, 2009 Comfort Cup, and I met a lady named Kesi Biluigi. And uh, after the Comfort Cup, an email pops by and says, would you like to venture in PR? Wow. Um, sports PR, right? and I just did a little bit of a research. I did that, I did that. And then two months later, I was like, bye-bye, the And uh, hello, PR. That was in 2009, November. Wow. And the journey has been way it is now. <laughs> was it a difficult decision for you? Because, I mean, you mentioned some of the amazing journalists, sports journalists that you work with, uh, to move into a different space. And although both of them are sports related, it's a very different type of communication that you're doing. Definitely. I mean, where you are, where I was, I used to get in news and people mm. telling me to put the news on the paper. Now it's the girl that was telling people that this is a good story. Your readers want this story. Um, it was a a transition that took time and I liked it because back then um, she had a small agency so I was allowed to go at my own pace into a new move but um, it wasn't as challenging as I thought it was and I think passion met the reality of it and they just clicked from the word go so I was able to wake up every day and look forward to my day and look forward to doing that not that I wasn't looking forward to journalism in a day but uh, it was a different ball game and I think I loved it I just grew into 
into the new challenge here. Yeah. I definitely want to hear more. But let's also look at other inspiring stories from incredible women in South Africa. One such is Elana Mayer, who is one of South Africa's sport grades with an Olympic medal and multiple global records to her name. Yeah, Maiden. just a couple of weeks ago, she celebrated yeah. her birthday. Yeah. And, you know, when she actually retired, she didn't walk away from the sport. Uh, she actually decided in 2013, she took her devotion to achieving youth development through sport to another level. Wow, she launched EnduroCAD together with Janet Wilman, and that's South Africa's first endurance academy. Incredible, it was created to promote and foster the development of long distance runners across the country, which should be you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've seen so many guys do it, but uh, unfortunately, I think I passed myself by date. Well, just one brief look at Facebook pages shows how much they have done in less than, uh, in less than a couple of years to bring South African athletes to the forefront they're making south african athletes great again and that is something that's brilliant because south africa certainly is blessed mm. with so much athletics talent let's get back to our game changer because yes. She's got an attitude, doesn't she? The she go get does. attitude. Oh, she does. You're supposed I love it. to wait for six months. Okay, no, no. I am done with this current <laughs> affairs thing. I'm done. I have to go and do. Do you think it's your attitude that's kind of uh, been all the difference for you? I think my passion came before my attitude. I was passionate and I, I mean, my background serves as a huge inspiration. I've always told myself, you know what, to go for opportunities that look like they're out of your league, because chances are they are never out of your league. Secondly, you have through experiences, the experiences that you have been through will actually help you to maneuver your way up to mm. where you want to be in the ladder. So if it looks like it's too much, essentially it's never that too much. It just the right place to be. Kia, now at M Sports, doing fantastic work, okay. uh, traveling to the World Cup. I was supposed to be part of the trip with Samuel <laughs> Eto. I want to find out how it was because she took my place and we need to talk about that, Bailey. Oh, okay, I'm going to keep them apart. Don't worry, <laughs> don't worry. We've got an ad break. Don't worry. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's now get right into it, into the conversation and zoom in on a lady who has blazed the trail in our sporting world. And today our superstar is Brownwyn Roots. She runs an international sports PR consulting company and has led some of the biggest campaigns on sporting sponsorship. Oh, her many achievements, including the running of the PR on Vodacom's Join the Voice campaign behind Bafana's uh, campaign at the FIFA World Cup as well. And many of the stories that you hear from the Olympics and the Paralympic Games. Yes. So from yeah. 2004 actually, yeah. have been those messages sent by Bronwyn. Yeah. She won a Presa Award for Vodacom's Rugby Player 23 campaign, and that's just one of a number of awards from this trailblazer. So certainly it has mm. paved the way for so many uh, people, much like our game changer who is nodding her head. Kia, do you feel that Bronwyn has really paved the way for women in this uh, space? She has, she has, and I think there's a lot of other incredible women that have really done the same thing. I mean, if I were to speak about my leader currently, Mom Felicia, yeah. who is an incredible, incredible human being. I even being. get goosebumps when you talk about her. I, I, which failed me when I have to mention her name because she has set as an epitome of a great example for women in mm. sports. She has set boundaries. She has not only been a mentor and a boss to us, but her work ethic is incredible, incredible mm. great. She has taught us principles of having honesty, discipline, mm. her values speak with just her presence. And uh, I think women like her deserve to be given that much credit because they've really done well for the sports industry in this country. Yeah. But we also know that with your career comes exciting campaigns, such as the ones you mentioned with Brownwin. What are some of the exciting projects and campaigns and globetrotting <laughs> ventures you've done that really are the highlights of your career? And you've oh, got to throw in the World Cup there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes! yes. There. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I can mention so many. Yeah. I think, just to start off, I was, it occurred to me recently that I actually worked on the World Cup trophy tour 
twice with different clients. I worked on the with, trophy, yeah. with different brands. I worked uh, on the World Cup trophy tour with Sony, that was 2010. I came back to work on the World Cup trophy tour with Coca-Cola. Oh, yeah. I have worked and met the likes of Zinedine Zidane when I was doing PR for the Danone Nations Cup. Oh, no. Wow. I have been... Uh, nominated on the new category for just for the world this year yeah. as women in sports uh, PR and sponsorship category I've worked on the brutal food netball remember it was an yes. eek that talks about empowering of women the first with yeah. nature in this country I've done great things I think it's been amazing yeah and Recently, which is a campaign that I'm working on, which is a Russia campaign that you're mm. working on. By the way, I didn't replace you. We, <laughs> <laughs> we take the two gentlemen there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no she, didn't, she didn't replace me. I had, I had duties to attend to here. <laughs> to attend to. Yeah. Yeah. So just as I was going to start playing referee, <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, like, no, no, let's clarify no. the situation. <laughs> <laughs> so the campaign allowed me to work with one of the Af greatest African footballers in the name of Samuel Edo. That yes. has been amazing. And I guess that's, that's PR in a nutshell. That's a typical PR. It would allow you opportunities and opportunities, some of the opportunities that you can never even get to comprehend. Your networking and your relationships within the space, it's really great, yeah. Who would you say has been the greatest sports person that you've been able to see sure. behind the scenes, you know, that you've met and they've really kind of left an impact on you, just how they are away from the cameras? Because that's the side that you get to mm. see. Oh, my God. I would mention the recent guy, Samuel Eter. Mm. Humble, humble. He, he takes the, the, the definition of mm. modesty and humility to a different landscape. He is one of the humblest people that I've ever met, irrespective of the great accolades associated with his sure. name. Yeah. He is a guy that stops and greet every single person from um, a butler mm. to a dog guy to a bartender. He, he's got that personality. And you wouldn't really say you are sitting with the greatest legend. Mm. He will engage in every conversation you can think of. So I, I think having the privilege to see him behind the scenes and in front of the camera was a great privilege for me. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot now because when we talk about sports marketing, it's important to also let the viewers know how easy or difficult it is to get a program um, sponsored, to get a, an athlete sponsored, to get an initiative sponsored. How do those campaigns come about? Oh, wow. I think it's... it's it actually depends on, on what we do basically as M Sports. We yeah. leverage um, what our fundamental role is to leverage sponsorships through um, sports properties, predominantly football. But we have worked in other campaigns that are um, not football related, sports outside football like rugby and cricket and netball. Yeah. We've worked with other accounts that are not even associated with sports at all. But I think that um, we are still getting to a place whereby we need to empower more sponsorship that are coming towards women mm -hmm. um, versus their male counterparts. Our male counterparts are far ahead in terms of getting their team sponsored and getting their personal mm. uh, brand sponsored. But um, it's it's a work of the corporate industry that would like to get in the space to also start looking at women in mm. sports and to start looking at women teams um, the, across the, 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 the globe, not necessarily only looking at uh, the top tier sports as well. Mm. Yeah. And, and what is the message for teams, women's teams specifically, and women athletes, uh, that they need to be presenting to corporates and that corporates need to be hearing to get involved in women's sports? I think it's also the spaces that we're into. If you look at the landscape of sports, uh, women's sport doesn't get that much of coverage. Mm. And honestly and truly, if um, a corporate is going to enter into an engagement or a sponsorship, they need to get a certain return on investment on that True. particular sponsorship. So if there's not a lot of um, 
women's sports being televised or being spoken mm. about into the newspapers. That really has to put a corporate into a debate on will I get a return on investment if mm. I invest in this particular property or I could post my money somewhere else. So you'll find out that, for example, Banyana is an excellent um, team that's excelling in and out, but it also depends on the return of investment from a corporate perspective into the sponsorship year. Yeah. All right, uh, let's continue to talk about Incredible Woman as well, where we're looking at Casta Semenya, who's now made the initial list of 10 nominees for the IAAF's Female World Athlete of the Year. The list will be reduced to five finalists before the winner is announced on the 4th of December. And South Africa, this is where you get your vote, please, until the 12th of November. Instagram, we have to Facebook, vote. We have to Facebook. Vote. We, everything, Twitter, everything. Go to the IAAF, all their official accounts, and vote for Cassie so Cass can be on that shortlist. Yeah, she's really incredible because she was nominated uh, for uh, dominating the 800 meters uh, race in the Commonwealth Games as well. So I'm looking forward to her taking it this time. She has to take it. Yeah, I agree. And South Africa, get your voice heard because it does also count. Let's continue speaking to yes. our game changer. We've spoken a little bit about uh, the landscape and the space that you are operating mm. in. What are some of the challenges that uh, you've experienced being a woman in this space? We have to work two times, if not three times, yeah. extra harder than the male counterpart. And hence, I will stay here and upload the likes of Felicia. You were really mm. paved the way for us. I mean, we, we're still having it difficult, but there are leaders that people that we look up to, to say that if they're able to do it, this is how it's, it's doable. It's, it's achievable. Mm. It's, you are equally uh, competent. You are equally um, qualified to be in this space. So I think the level of effort we have to put in is four times higher than our, our male counterparts here. Yeah. Mm. You travel, you work hard, and you're also a mom. How do you balance it all? It, I hate asking that question because we never ask the dad, <laughs> the you. men. We never say, you. you're a CEO, you're <laughs> a dad, dad, and you're... How do you balance it all? But unfortunately, we ask our woman, <laughs> a woman, woman before for that. I'm glad you, you said, you <laughs> mentioned that, the fact that it's never the same question that's asked yeah. uh, the male. But I think I've had an incredible support system in, in my family. Um, they have played a huge role in helping me raise my daughter. Hi, Obisa. <laughs> <laughs> and um, without that support structure, you, you, the, 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 the hours are long. Um, you take work home. You mm. know, you wake up early. You travel for days, weeks without being home. So I think I really would like to applaud my family. This has been a true support structure. My family and friends played a critical role into ensuring that she does not feel that space of being left out. Where's my mom? So mm -hmm. if she's with my friend, my cousin, or my other aunt, she still knows that she's home. Wow. In 10 years' time, where do you see Kia? Boo. <laughs> I, I have actually was speaking to somebody recently and I was still caught in the debate whether in 10 years time I still want to be in sports or venture something completely, completely different. But I think somewhere in my career, I would like to work for CAF or FIFA in then between, even if it's just for two years time. So 10 years time, I'll be wearing that jacket. Oh, with, with the FIFA, uh, the, the, with the emblem. <laughs> yes. The jacket with the emblem, yeah. And a message to all the ladies that are watching that want to get into sports marketing? It's not as glamorous as it looks like. Mm -hmm. I think the, the misconception is that it's glamorous, but it's not. It's a lot and lot of hard work. You work long hours, you work um, weekends, you travel a lot. But most importantly, if you're passionate about it, if you believe that the space you want to be into, because there's something that you're going to it's, you're going to be in a position where you feel like, I want to be here, but the long hours are derailing you. Mm -hmm. or, but be passionate. If you're passionate, shoot for the stars. Like I said, there's no such a thing as the opportunity is not for my level. Go for it. The least you could do is fail at it. But don't fail without trying. Sure. I love that. Uh, so do I. She's got this um, wonderful, humble aura. energy, yeah. but she's such a go-getter and she's achieved so much. Absolutely. Kia, thank you so much for being our game changer on the Ladies thank Club you. today. We've enjoyed. I'm 
I've certainly enjoyed it, yeah. spending time with you this morning. Thank you so much for having me, ladies. This was a great morning. You've been absolutely enchanting. Absolutely loved it. I am mesmerized, in fact. But that's all we have time for this week. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Remember, until we meet again, that greatness is always earned and never, ever given. Thanks for watching us. Bye-bye.